Are you feeling overwhelmed by the pressure to excel academically by having a high GPA to get into PT school? Is your low GPA holding you back from your dream as a physical therapist? In this video, you're going to learn how a holistic approach to the PT application can gain you access to a backdoor entry into acceptance for PT school. Lego. What's up everyone? My name is Dr. Justin Lee, physical therapist. I mentor students to get accepted into physical therapy school. You can feel free to check me out on my other handles, but you're going to gain the most education here on this YouTube channel. So I want to talk to you about one of my student mentees. She was a junior, so she had about one or two more years before she applied to PT school. And she was juggling school, academics, part-time work, extracurricular activities, and so on and so forth. She said that she had a pretty good application and she was pretty well-rounded, which I would definitely agree. However, her GPA was relatively on the lower side. Um, at the time, she was around like a 2.9, 3.0. And yeah, I mean, she was a junior, so she still had about one to two years left with all the prerequisites that she still had to take at that time. Um, however, her low GPA was really bogging her down. She came to me and said, Justin, I don't think I'm going to get into PT school because it's very competitive. And I know that you need to have at least like a 3.5 GPA. And my GPA is nowhere near that. Now we're definitely talking about overall and prerequisite GPA. So she, she knew, she knew the weight of what her GPA held and how it could give her the best chances to get into PT school. However, that is not the entire case of her whole application. See, you see is what she, when she came to me first, I noticed that she was very stressed and she had a lot of different things going on, overwhelmed with part-time work, extracurriculars, her academics, all of that, all of that stuff, not to mention the stuff that's happening at home with her family. So the first thing that I told her to do is, hey, I just want you to just relax, okay? Um, take a deep breath. Practice mindfulness in paying attention to the things that you can control, which is your studying, which is how much time you allocate towards your academics, part-time work, and focus on your breathing because you just have, you're just a very high-strung uh, person with uh, some anxiety tendencies. So I told her just relax. Now here's the practical step, step number two. I told her, we need to figure out a balance. We need to figure out where you are putting in your time. You have 24 hours in the day, eight hours to sleep. So then that leaves us how much more time for studying, part-time work, extracurriculars, etc. And then we said, what are your priorities? Where do you want to focus on the most? And of course she's like, I really want to get my academics up because I have a lower GPA. I said, okay, you know what? That's completely fine. So let's allocate this much amount of time, right? About 50% of the time that you have towards academics. And then let's split up the rest of the 50% towards the other things like extracurriculars and other things like that. And that was a big shift for her because she actually was spending more time when she actually broke down, kid, this is how many hours that I have in my day and broke down, wow, I'm actually spending about 70% in extracurriculars, in my part-time work, and also my social life, and only spending 30% in my academics. So it was a big shift for her once she was able to objectively put what hours of her day was going to what, that she realized that she was not actually spending the time to do academics. And this is really important because those of you who think you can study less and just get good grades, there is definitely a part of it where you can study smarter and more effectively. However, the fact of the matter is you have to put in the work. You just, you just have to. And then lastly is her ability to just like create some mental, create space for a healthy mental well-being. So some practical steps that I gave her, I told her, I said, number one, I want you to spend time with the people that you really connect with. Continue to build meaningful connections. However, set some boundaries, right? Maybe allocate an hour or two in the week, and that's it. 
but strategically place them where you know you're working hard and studying hard, and then your hangout with your friend is actually kind of a treat. So the way that she was able to generate these connections with other people and really the people that was really important to her life, meaningful connections, her parents, her best friend, um, and then I think it was someone else in the pre-PT club that she was in. And that was it. Just a handful of people, less than five people in her life. So that was number one. Number two, I told her, I want you to go outside or exercise or move. This is extremely important to change your physiologies, to change your psychology, to change your work ethic. It is a breath of fresh air, literally and pun intended, to go outside and get that rejuvenating um, experience for your entire body. I told her to implement this two times a day. So sometime in the midday, maybe after you go to class, and then sometime before you sit down and study. And so by implementing these changes of building meaningful connections with other people and strategically placing them throughout the week, and also going outside or moving your body for two times a day, and really changing the balancing of how much time is allocated in her life, there was a big change. And this not only affected her studying and her academics, which helped her raise her GPA, helped her to do really well in her classes, but it also helped her mental well-being. Now students, you talk about burnout, you talk about, man, I am so overwhelmed, I have anxiety, I'm depressed, and all these things. I wonder why, if you're constantly in your room, trying to study with no strategy and no approach and you're just work hard right no pain no gain that's not going to get you anywhere there has to be a smarter way so when i taught her these strategies of balance and going outside and really spending time with the people that you really care about it was a her world lifted off her shoulders and she felt so much less anxiety and was thriving in her classes, her extracurriculars, her part-time work, her GPA. And by the time she became a senior and was ready to apply, she looked back and said, this was the life-altering trajectory uh, change that has happened in my life. And when I came to you, when, I, when you taught me these things, Dr. Justin, you helped me shift from this way versus going this way where I would not have been able to get accepted into multiple programs at this point. So what I think is a really big takeaway from my students is that you need to have a balance with academics and also your mental health. This is gonna be a huge shift in the way that I'm going to help teach and guide you students, my pre-PT community on balancing life, mental health, and the joyfulness of just living life and on your terms, really, right? We're gonna talk a lot about finances, we're gonna talk about tactical steps to uh, make balance and manage your time, and all these different things so that you can thrive as a student and set yourself up for success in the future. So if you have one to three years before you're gonna apply to PT school, feel free to reach out to me. I'm gonna leave my information in the description below. Feel free to email me, contact me on social media. I will reach back out to you. And lastly, if you're like, hey Justin, I'm in, let's get into it. How do I get mentored by you? I have a mentorship mastermind program for pre-PT students. We're gonna talk all about the great things about setting yourself up for success for PT school applications, but also some self-development hacks and strategies that are gonna help you be a high-performing student and also live a fulfilling career as a physical therapist. If you're interested in that, I do have a link in the description. Every day is a great day to lift weights, lift others, and lift yourself up. Hey, really quick, what is your routine or what's a way that you implement so that you can promote your own healthy mental well-being?